one's so bad. It is absolutely unbelievable. Aw, did you lose another buy-in? No, you don't understand. I have all the best hands in range. He's relegated to just a single pair. I put them all in. He calls with only 30% chance to win and still gets there. I guess your sugar mommy's gonna have to cover bills for another week. And if you wanna help me support this loser, check out the merch shop. We have a ton of official poker merchandise as well as other general poker merchandise. You can check out the link in the description below. Wait, who are you talking to? Hey. Pipe down, you useless bum. Get your butt in the kitchen and make me dinner before I show you what a bad beat is. Well. <laughs> Hello, world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 129 of my poker vlog. For this one, we played the inaugural $350 tournament in Franklin, Kentucky. The Triple Barrel Social Club, we are going to get right into those hands. All right, so it is day two of the Tucky Meetup game. Today is going to be a $350 tournament. Off the bat, we have four tables running strong. The house put a $150 bounty on my head, so anyone who knocks me out gets an extra $150. The starting chip stack is $25K, and on the first hand of note, blinds are $100, $100. Under the gun raises to $300. I'm on the button with pocket tens. Probably should be three betting this, but it's very early in the tournament, and this is a raise from the under the gun spot so should give it some credit so i choose to just call the small blind the big blind call as well so we're gonna go three ways to a flop of jack nine five two diamond not my favorite board also not great when the small blind just leads for 600 when the big blind and the under the gun aggressor folds is back to me I think this small lead can often just be diamonds trying to name their price and get to see a cheap turn and possibly river. So I think my hand is actually strong enough to call. Don't see too many jacks doing this lead, especially into three other players and a pre flop presser. So I make the call. On the turn eight of spades, pretty much one of the best cards I could ever hope for, I turn open ended. When the small blind checks to me, I'm going to bet relatively big on this one. I don't want diamonds to be able to draw for cheap. And maybe a weak nine or the weakest jacks will fold to just some of Aggression on the turn. So I bet 1800 and this does not deter my opponent. She eventually falls. Not too happy about that. On the river ace of hearts, I actually think this is the really good card to bluff at. If my opponent was doing some weird line with like king jack, queen jack, jack 10's kind of hard because I double block it, this would be a miserable run out for them. As well as the fact that the diamonds missed, I think this one has to be a bluff attempt by myself. So when it checks to me, I throw out a bet of 3000, which I think is a very bad idea very big bet considering how early we are on the tournament my opponent thinks for a long time i think i just punted some of my stack away but my opponent eventually folds showing the ace of diamonds so i guess she was giving me credit for a two pair possibly a already made straight and probably just had ace x of diamonds hidden out that she was not really wanting really going for that flush but no complaints out of me we'll take the first hand of this tournament and our 25k starting stack is about 27 28 now feeling pretty good getting some momentum going we move along to level 2 100 200 blinds i'm in the big blind under the gun limps plus one limps button limps and small blind completes before i look down at pocket kings a very welcome sight so we're gonna raise we're gonna have to raise pretty big we have five people in there that are somewhat interested so we raise it up to 1500 and apparently i didn't make it big enough because every opponent calls besides the small blind so we're gonna go four ways to a flop can it be safe please nope it's obviously ace high on ace of diamonds, five of diamonds, seven of hearts. Always ace high. I do have the king of diamonds in my hand, so I have some backdoor flush possibilities, but I think against three opponents, I have to just check call this one down. When I check, the under the gun opponent bets 1,500. The other two get out of the way, and it's back on me. With a little over 6K in the pot, I think that this one-fourth size bet has to just be a call with kings. Can turn some diamonds, can turn a king, maybe bluff on later streets, but I make the call. The turn is the queen of diamonds. Pretty good, I'd say. Pick up the backdoor diamond draw, but I don't have the betting lead, so I check it to my opponent a second time. She checks this one back. Feeling good, chance to just realize my equity, but the six of hearts on the river is not going to be that. I think my hand has enough showdown value that I don't necessarily need to turn it into a bluff. I think my opponent can still have like pocket jacks, pocket tens. Maybe they let out on the flop with like a 6-8 or a 7-8, something like that. So I check. When my opponent checks it back, she has ace-9 
offsuit. So, you know, you gotta love the limp call ace nine offsuit to always the garbage aces that crack the kings. We progress to the 200-300 level with a 200 big blind ante, where a middle position player raises to 800. I look down at ace king of spades, very happy with that sight, especially on the button. This one is going to be a 3 bet. I raise it up to 2500. The big blind and the initial aggressor decide to call, so we're going 3 ways to a flop, to which we do not connect in the slightest. The board is queen 7-7, seven, seven, not even a single spade. And I'm actually probably going to see about this one. It's pretty likely both opponents missed, unless they had exact ace queen so this is probably going to be a c bet bluff spot with just ace king high but i don't even get the opportunity when the preflop initial better leads out for 5500 i consider raise bluffing i consider calling consider folding and eventually just decide that this opponent's really never leading on a rainbow board without having a piece of it especially into a a three better i can pretty much have pocket queens in range and my opponent shouldn't have it that often so thinking i have the pretty much the nut advantage i think this just has to be a a very strong value bet by my opponent so i eventually fold choose not to even peel and i'm thankful that i did because the big blind then jams and if i would have called the 5500 i absolutely can't call this jam and the other opponent decides to call and it turns out the hands were big blind had pocket kings and the original pre-flop aggressor did have ace-queen. Man, can I get an ace-high board one-time dealer? Runouts, ten of hearts, four of spades, so I would not have improved. And kings are going to hold and get a pretty massive double up and a big stack early on in this tournament. And my stack's not looking too good. Almost 20,000 in my stack. Start with 25. Not the direction we're hoping for. But on the 200-400 level... With a 200 big blind ante, I raise from early position with king queen off suit. The two players to my direct left call and the big blind call as well. We're very happy to see a king high board on king 8 3 rainbow. So, top pair, good kicker, showed the best hand. I think I could bet a little over half pot, just value bet my hand, deny equity from better hands. Maybe a weaker king or an 8 will pay me off. I bet 2500. But this bet gets the job done. Everyone folds, and we are back to chipping up in the right direction. Following that, in the same level, I looked down at pocket fives. I raised to 1100. Gonna size up a little bit, hopefully gain some fold equity, not go, not go four or five ways in a tournament with pocket fives. On this one, the player two to my left calls as he's called pretty much every hand. He's he's the widest, most active player at the table. And the big blind defense as well. We completely whiff on the king 10 9 board, rainbow. And this one's just going to be a check. We've been pretty aggressive when we have it. We don't need to bluff every single hand when we don't. And the extremely active player bets pretty much pot for 3300 And this is going to be a fold for me with the pocket fives. We're still trending kind of in the wrong direction. Win some, lose some. Gotta get something going. On the 300-500 with a 300 big blind anti level, an early position player raises to 1200. There's two callers. I'm in the cutoff with 7-6 of clubs. I think this is fine to peel. I can connect pretty hard. This hand plays good multi-way. And if I connect, I can just win a pretty massive pot with only investing 1200. So I make the call. The button calls as well, so we're going to go four ways to a flop of 10, 7, 6, two spades. Pretty much a dream board for me, hoping that the preflop aggressor has an ace 10 or an overpair and can continuation bet, and I can just raise and hopefully get my under 20k stack in. But he checks all the way to me. I can't let this check through. I'm going to bet small, only 1,000. The button is the only caller, so we're going to go heads up to a turn card. Just the king of hearts. King 10 gets there, pocket kings. I don't think it's too relevant. I think I have to bet again. Hopefully my opponent has like a spade draw. Maybe king queen of spades would be nice. So I continue for 2,500, trying to set up a river jam. I have about 12,000 left in my stack. I have the bounty too, so it will entice some lighter calls if I feel the need. My opponent calls the turn. I'm very happy about that. And we bink the seven of hearts on the river. We make a full house. Unfortunately, spades miss. So if my opponent was drawing, they're never really gonna be able to call a bet so that means i have to size down a little bit targeting just a single king single 10 hoping those hands could pay off maybe pocket eights pocket nines they're disbelieving i only bet 5,000, but that is too much as my opponent fold but we went a decent sized pot brings my stack to slightly over 20k very happy to be crawling back please take a moment and subscribe before we arrive at the 300 600 level with a 300 big blind ante i have ace king ace of diamonds king of spades unsuited but still very pretty to look at 
There is an early position limp. I'm gonna raise this one up. Obviously, Ace King is a great hand. I make it 1500. Player two to my left calls as he has every single hand. The big blind calls as well, but the limper folds. So kind of an interesting development. The flop is Ace King five, two clubs. Extremely happy to flop top two pair. This is gonna be a great spot. The blinds are a little bit deeper. It should be pretty easy to get my whole stack in if I want to. However, when the small blind checks to me, I think that the player behind me who's been super aggressive is highly likely to bet this flop. So I'm going to go for a check raise with a hand that's so strong can happily trap with, as well as the fact that I block the strongest hands. Unless my opponent has exactly pocket fives, I should be, I should have the best hand all the time here. Sure, there's club draws that I could bet now and protect against, but I'm pretty much committed to this hand regardless of the run out. So we're going to start this one off with a check. My plan goes horribly wrong as the button checks behind i really was not expecting this particular opponent to check back but we are going three ways to a turn card which is extremely safe in the eight of diamonds and this actually induces the small blind to bet he bets 2500 i think this is a good spot to just call maybe the button will squeeze now if the small blind throws out a bet on the river i can happily raise then otherwise i can just bet myself if he checks to me so this is going to be just a call and we make another full house on the river. The ace of spades. How beautiful. What's even more beautiful is the small blind does not slow down. He bets 6,500. At this point, I'd say my plan worked pretty good. I only have 15k in my stack now. I can wait a few seconds and then jam and hopefully get the small blind to pay me off. So after a few seconds, I announce the all-in. Again, the bounty's in play. Anyone who stacks me gets an extra $150, but that is not going to happen on this hand as I have the actual nuts. After a decently long tank, the button calls, which I wasn't really expecting, and that kind of forces the small blind out of the pot, and the button had ace nine of clubs. So he was in fact on that club draw and happened to river three aces. What a terrible run out for him, but honestly really shocked he did not bet the ace king five two clubs board with ace nine of clubs. So maybe there's some layers to this opponent's game that I'm not understanding, but either way we will take more than a double up as the small blind added some extra chips to the pot and we are looking at about a 35,000 chip stack almost one and a half starting stacks we're feeling pretty good but now we're at the 400 800 with a 400 big blind anti level with two limbs i look down at king jack of spades i'm gonna raise this one up gotta go a little bit bigger with it i'd love to just win the dead money but otherwise we want to take the betting lead and build a pot when we have the strongest hands especially against limping ranges we bet 4200 player two to my left calls and the other limper decides to fold so we're heads up to a decently sized pot we get a beautiful king four deuce rainbow board. Happy to just bet small here against this particular opponent. He'll call with weaker kings, maybe milling pocket pairs. No flush draw to get value from, so we also want random ace highs to be able to pay before they see cards for free. So 3,000 is the bet, but he quickly folds and we take this one down. Next interesting hand. We're in the 500 1000 level with a 1000 big blind ante. With two limps, I'm in the big blind with pocket jacks. I raise to 5000 as I have to size up here. These opponents are calling way too liberally, so I have to put the money in pre when I have the best hand. And we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes 10 high on 10 8 7 2 hearts. Very good for me. I still retain an overpair. A 9 gives me a straight. I should have priced these opponents out of these middling bad hands, so I'm going to bet big on this one. The pot's over 15,000, so we would definitely appreciate winning this one. So I bet 12,000, biggest bet up in this tournament so far, besides the early all in at my particular table. Player two to my left, pretty much snap calls. Not the happiest about that. Hoping for a safe turn card where I can just possibly jam and really get him off his 10x hands, but turn is the ace of hearts, one of the worst hearts in the deck. I do have the jack of hearts, so I turn a flush draw, but my opponent could have ace 10, ace king, ace nine. He could have all of those in range so this is really a bad card for me i check it switching to a check call mode and my opponent checks it back rivers the queen of clubs also a pretty dicey card it's an over to my jacks but it really shouldn't change anything that much but still just worried that my opponent has an ace i check kind of mad with the turn in river my opponent quickly checks it back and announces two pair okay i guess you flop two pair i cannot beat that he has queen eight off suit well that one's quite disappointing to say the least ace 100 slows me down all the time gets there on the queen Ugh, not running the greatest so now i have about twenty-eight thousand in my stack and we're on the 500 1500 big blind anti level it folds all the way to the small blind who makes it 3k i look down at ace queen of diamonds 
I know the pre-flop charts. This is going to be a re-jam. Just we'll get stacks in if we need to. Otherwise, this is a pretty easy just jam take down the dead money. Put it all in with ace queen. My opponent quickly folds, and we will survive in this tournament. I'm not giving up. On the next fun hand of poker, in the same level, I look down at jack ten of spades. I raised to twenty three hundred. The sizes don't need to be too big. They'll call anything, and this hand's pretty playable. Well, the player two to my left calls, as he's called every single hand, and the big blind calls as well. We're going three ways to nine five four two spades. Great to flop a flush draw two overs when it checks to me. This board in general would never really connect to my opening range besides pocket nines. So not having too many of the strongest hands on this board, I decided to check this one back. I can bet many turn cards if they're over a nine rep any of the over pairs hopefully realize my equity my flush i just checked this one the cutoff checks it back we bink a flush with the eight of spades great to see the flush come in when the big blind checks to me i have to bet here i made a flush need to get some value grow my chip stack hopefully get some going in this tournament i bet two thousand and my nemesis at this table snap raises to six thousand folds back to me i'm never really folding here just gonna think for a second before calling hands way too strong to get away from and i suppose he would do this with just the single ace or king of spades so this is a pretty easy call for me we are heads up to a river card which of course is the four of spades pairing the board four spades on board i mean could i find a worse river card at all ever probably not and when i checked my opponent he bets seven thousand i mean i can't really see myself ever having the best hand here really if i call this bet i'll have like 12,000 left in the tournament which at this point is only 12 big blinds while everyone else has like 30 to 40k i consider folding for a long time but i just think the size of the pot's too big and the bet's too small and you know it's tough to make a flush relatively deep in tournaments so i eventually just flick in the call i'm a disbeliever i guess my opponent says you're good if you have a flush well that was scary okay i have the jack 10 which is horrible because my opponent can't even have the 10 he claims he just had a four and i guess that makes sense but either way we'll take a pretty strong pot to bring our chip stack back to about fifty thousand. i think we're above average at this point feeling very good gaining some momentum on this hand, unfortunately, we pick it up on the turn, but it's definitely an interesting one. With two limps, I limp the queen five of hearts. Do not try this at home. It's the very much not recommended in poker, but there's very few raises at this table besides me, so I think I can pretty easily get away with this and outplay these people post-flop, especially when I'm in relatively late position in the hijack. So I limp, button limps. We end up going five ways to a flop of queen six three two hearts so flopping the queen high flush draw is amazing and it checks all the way to me in the hijack on this action i think i could bet small here possibly win there's about five thousand in the middle so i bet three thousand not many players should have anything this low this board shouldn't connect with anyone even limping but when I bet 3,000, the big blind raises to 7,000. I don't think I can fold. I have position. Have any card higher than an 8 if he's repping, you know, 9, 8, 10, 8, things like that will be a horrible card for him. I can just make my flush as I've been doing that pretty consistently here. So I make the call for 7,000. The turn is the four club. So we actually turn open-ended as well. And then my opponent checks to me. Well, I have a lot on this board, but also nothing. Queen high is not gonna be good enough to just check back and realize equity. I think I can put a lot of pressure on my opponent when he raises very small and then checks turn. He basically has a one pair very small at best. And I'm setting up a river jam. Betting 13,500 I have about 25 behind and I can jam on pretty much any river if it's higher than an 8 although it'd be preferable if it's a heart or making me a straight but after a very long tank my opponent eventually lets it go saying he had an 8 later in the day was deciding if he was gonna make a move and jam with it but I was probably committed at that point and we've reached the color up and I have the most blacks in the table so I get the honors of coloring out the blacks before we arrive at the next fun hand of poker. At 1500, 1000, 1000 big blind ante. Under the gun limps, button limps. I'm in the small blind. King, queen of hearts, good enough for a raise. I make it 6,000. Hopefully I can just win some dead money, but not in Nashville. Everyone calls the under the gun limper and the button. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop of queen, queen, jack, two spades, one diamond. Pretty phenomenal board for me, but I think I have too much of it locked up. So I'm gonna check to my opponents. When I check, both of them check it back. The turn is the four of diamonds, bring second diamond on board. And with two flush draws, I think I have to do the betting myself. 
itself here. Can't let any of the flushes see the river for free. And maybe some pocket eights, pocket nines will pay off a bet if they disbelieve me to check back flop if I connected in some way. So I bet 11,000, but this is too much. Both opponents fold and we take down a decent one. On the next interesting hand, I'm in the big blind. On the 1500, 1000, 1000 big blind any level, the player two to my left limps as he's played pretty much every hand, done pretty well with it, honestly. The player to his direct left open jams for 21,500. And I looked down at pocket queens, have about a 55,000 stack, so this is probably just going to be a call. Can't really see myself getting away from queens for 20 big blinds. Hopefully he has an ace king or ace jack type hand, but nope, this time he has pocket kings. When I'm the only caller, we get to see the runout, and we do not improve. Queens into kings, devastating in a tournament, especially when you're 10 to 12 levels deep in it, but it's all right. We're still alive. We got about 25 to 30,000 in our stack. We can come back from this. Next hand, I'm in the hijack. I got ace 10 off suit. I raised to 3,500. The big blind is the only caller. Board is 10 high on 10, 8, deuce, rainbow. We're going to see bet for the same size as the preflop bet, 3,500. And we take down a pot. But every chip is very valuable at this point. So we're happy to win that one. In the same level, I look down at King Jack suited, I raised to 3,500, pick up just the blinds and ante, which is actually significant as it is 3,000 chips picked up. In the same level, I look down at pocket sevens, a little less strong than the King Jack suited in my opinion, so we're going to make it 4,500, especially we don't want these opponents to think we're just bullying them, but we take down another one, another 3,000 added to the stack, feels pretty good, we're chipping up slowly, and then we go pretty much card dead for a few levels. We get past the 1000 2000 1k level we actually get down to 10 players left we're two tables of five at the 3000 big blind 1500 small blind 1500 big blind ante i have about 45,000 in my stack and the small blind open jams it on me so i have to look at my cards closely each lap is pretty expensive and we're very close to the money first card is the jack of diamonds that's a pretty good one. Second card is the ace of spades i snap call this five-handed blind on blind is just an obvious call there's no way to get away from it you're ahead of so many of his hands he could have plenty of weaker aces king queens flipping with sixes sevens things like that but we're beating all of those even more we're versing jack nine off suit pretty much the best scenario ever we're about to double up and really make a run at this tournament well i guess not when the flop is 10 9 3 do have backdoor spades which i don't hit and he gets a third nine on the river just for extra insult to injury so that will be the end of this tournament for me zero dollars will go to kyle in this one so you get nothing you lose good day sir yeah i wish that last 70 30 would have went my way could have went a really deep run possibly even uh Binged my first tournament, but not the way the cards were going to go today. My thoughts on the club in general is it's huge, it's got a lot of space, plenty of room to expand, add more tables as long as the action warrants it. So I hope people will give this club some business, give them the opportunity to expand the way they deserve. One of my favorite parts of it is they offer free sodas, water, coffee for all the players involved. That's quite a perk. Many other rooms don't offer things such as that. Finally, they run on time rake, which I love much better than rake every hand. So people who want to play a lot of hands, this is definitely the room for you. And that's all I have for this one. Remember, if you'd like to support the channel, check out the merch shop. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one.